All right, what's up? My name is Song Terror, also known as Ranitor or Ran, and this is my application for Minecraft Survivor Eternal Oasis. So let's start off with me. Who am I? I I'm 16 years old. Obviously, I love cross. I love running a lot, cross country, track and field, cross country. I did that since I was since in the sixth grade. My strategy for it would be to make a lot of friends. Okay, make a lot of friends. And they're at the beginning of the game, then they would be able to pull me into alliances. If I find myself at the bottom, it's just gonna be war. But you know, I'm, I'm gonna be every, do everything in my power to make sure that I get myself to the end of the end, to the end at the end of the day. Welcome everybody to the Minecraft Survivor Eternal Oasis reunion special. I'm here joined with almost the entire cast of the season. So everybody, give a round of applause for a great season. Congratulations, Rander, on winning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Randitor, what is your actual reaction of winning this season? The second that I found out it was a vote, I was like, yeah, I got this in the back. Because I knew that I was loyal to Tim the entire time. And uh, he was loyal to me as well. So, I mean, for a year, there was a little doubt in my mind that Edgar won, but I was like 90% sure that, yeah, I got this in the bag for the year. So when I found out, I was like, okay, good, it did actually happen. And how do you feel about your gameplay overall? Because it seemed like the viewers really didn't get to see much of what you did with the edit, because obviously it was in fa the edit was in favor of Tim winning. It seemed like it was that for the most part. But what do you think the viewers didn't really get to see about your gameplay? Um, oh, I don't really know. I'm going to be honest, like... I look back at that and I'd say I, I made a lot of mistakes uh, watching it back. I'm like, oh, I could have done this better or maybe voted out, not vote out Leah or voted out Tim at the final four. Um, so I could see why the the viewers are like, oh, why did Ranitor win the game? Um, but it's kind of hard to look back at that and say I would have done this different because at the end of the day, I did win it and I wouldn't change it either way. Gotcha. And how was this experience for you overall? Like, how do you feel from it? Uh, oh, I, I, I've loved it since the, the day that I first applied to uh, right now, sitting at the reunion with uh, all the lovely people near me. You know, um, I, I wouldn't change a single thing about it. And I'm glad that you were able to pick me along with everybody else here. All right, Edgar, we all know you got second place. It was a very close, very close battle between you and Ranader. Um, What was your biggest challenge in getting to the final? Um, probably being shit at uh, all the challenges because this was my first time, you know, really playing Minecraft and playing with a mouse and keyboard, you know. Uh, so it was a really tough adjustment. I would say that was probably my biggest challenge getting to the end. I knew my social game would carry me pretty far, um, and I'm grateful for that. Do you think that you had any moves in this game that didn't reward you the win over at Ranitor? Didn't reward me the win? Uh, Probably uh, going back to the first question, it was probably being bad at challenges. I think that's the reason why uh, other people voted Ranitor. I think if I probably would have won an immunity challenge or or two, uh, I think I probably could have swayed someone's vote. Um, but being so useless at challenges uh, really derailed my chance of winning. Now, Edgar, you had a really endearing story throughout the entire season. I mean, you were playing for your sister. You were playing for your wife. Uh, how hard was it? To, to lose this after, you know, playing for them and not being able to come out with the win? Uh, it was pretty grueling, uh, but I'm really, really happy that it was Ranitor that won. It, like, the final three or four, I was very, very happy. Actually, when we got to merge, like, anyone that would have won, I would have been extremely happy with that. Um, yeah, it sucks to get second place. To me, second place is the first loser, but I learned a lot from this, and uh, I'm extremely grateful for it. All right, now, Tim... You got third place. You had to cast the soul vote for Ranitor. Uh, I want to ask you this. What made you vote for Ranitor over Edgar? Because obviously you and Ranitor were together since the very beginning of the game. But was that the only reason and the, and the sole factor that made you vote for him? Um, I mean, okay, that's an interesting question, I guess. Uh, I mean, it was more so the fact that it's like, shit. I mean, we had conversations, I think, where, I mean, I think we both kind of knew if it came down to it at some point, we'd probably vote each other. It was just more so off of like the principle of, you know, we kind of have been together since the start. I was honestly having a tough time because I had such a strong bond with Edgar, even though we met at like a later point in the game. And I honestly felt like pretty torn between the two, but I probably would have felt worse if I didn't vote for Ranitor, I guess. 
is, is there anything else that you learned about yourself while playing this game or just in about survivor in general yeah um i mean obviously i think if i were to do redo my ftc i would have done it a lot differently um i have more confidence now for sure uh at the time i was hella anxious because it was like the first time i really did anything on this scale but i just got to believe in myself more and just have more confidence in myself not really second guess what i want to say or you know stuff like that so i have learned a lot about myself watching it back speaking of some people that have confidence in their in themselves uh let me go to let me go to bradley uh bradley <laughs> what <laughs> the, beginning of the, the beginning of this game you seem very outspoken you seem to you know have have assessed your tribe in What's a very outspoken story? way uh what made you come on this island and and speak of all these people the way you did? Um, I, I oh, why you, you call me off guard? Okay, um, uh, <laughs> um, like define what you mean by like speak about these people the way I did. You're very vocal in your confessionals. I mean, you were very vocal against Edgar, very vocal against really just your entire tribe. Okay, um, that's because everyone sucks at this game but me. I think Edgar's really awesome though. Um, <laughs> I'm not, that's just me being silly. Um, I guess um. I had a lot of, I guess I had a lot of frustration during the challenges. Oh, I'm so caught off guard by this. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> okay. I, I had a lot of, um, I guess, frustration during the challenges that I guess I just vented out during my confessional. Because I guess at the end of the day, that's what the confessional is for, just getting out the frustrations. And right. um, yeah, I think I'm a very, I'm a very good at being, I guess, authentic and honest and open. So I guess the confessionals were something I was, I guess, good at in that department. So Wiley, again, another very outspoken player. You had your tribe under your control from the minute you stepped on that beach. Uh, what possessed you to play the way you did? I mean, people can, you know, compare you to some of the greats of Real Survivor like Boston Rob. I honestly don't think I deserve that moniker because uh, watching my game, ba uh, game play back wasn't great i definitely came across a way that i didn't want to come across in the sense of like being the leader i wanted to come in but nerves got to me and then just kind of took the rein because uh there's one specific moment i always point out is uh between me tim and i think it was uh mike as well and they were just saying like oh, who do you want to vote who do you want to vote it was just that in a circle and then i took a chance to take a uh, shot at Tucker at that point. And then from that moment, it just kind of blew up and I became a person I did not want to be. Yeah, and I actually, I'm I'm very curious to, un to understand this because as I'm the one that edits the show. I'm the one that sees the relationships between everybody. And the rivalry between you and Tucker, it like almost didn't make sense to me, but we kind of had to run with that narrative. So like what, what singular moment sparked the kind of rivalry between you two? Do you remember? So there was no rivalry, like period. What happened was when we were sitting in uh, the circle introducing each other, I thought the person I got the most reception from everyone from our tribe and a more warmly like Tucker came across as this funny guy, which I saw as a threat and like people would like carry him. Uh, and that was the only reason. And then turns out he was also good at comps. There was no other reason than that. Uh, and I had no idea he was coming after me. I had zero idea. I just thought that was the person I wanted to take down. That's the person I had my eyes on. There was no really specific reason besides I saw him as a threat. So, uh, Tucker, do you care to kind of comment on, you know, your downfall in the okay, game yeah. versus Wiley? So, so yeah, uh, the, the only, I did not exactly see Wiley as a threat, but I mean, he did annoy the f out of me. Sorry, but... <laughs> It's just how, how it was. I, I did not like hearing his voice and I did not like hearing his laugh. It, was, it just got on my really got on my really got on my nerves. And I'm sorry to say that, Wiley. But uh, I mean, also, I could just tell he, 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 he was kind of being fake as fuck, like uh, saying, Tucker, you, you killed it in that challenge, man. I'm, I was just like, man. But yeah. And Wiley, what's your response uh, to that? Because I'm sure that probably surprises you because to me, it seems like you were being genuine. You were like, I don't know. Like, I was. Yeah. I was completely being genuine, to be honest, because there was that moment where Fox was failing and uh, I wanted to morale boost him of basically just keep on going. We got this. And we eventually did win that challenge. Uh, that was all genuine because like, even though people saw me as a person that was trying to lead the tribe and deter people from talking... Uh, it was all coming from a good place. It was never from a spot of like, oh, trying to gain myself in a higher position. It was all just like I wanted us to go further and further. 
All right, so I want to I want to turn it back over to you, Tucker, because there is a question or kind of a kind of a statement for me actually. Because the reason why you came back onto this season, you played in the original live streamed Dream Island season. That was my first ever Survivor that I've ever hosted, and you played on that. You got you were the runner up of that. You also played in Big Brother Minecraft season six, where you were the runner up of that. And so what what possessed you to apply to this show? Because for me, it seemed that you had a very personal transformation since playing in those shows all the way back when okay yeah uh well first of all i got zero votes to win in dream island and second of all i got zero votes to win in season six so i mean i came on with the intent to win and we all saw how that turned out and i really just wanted to give it another try so that's pretty much the simplest answer i can give all right so one of the biggest moments in this season was randers shot in the dark if it comes out with a yellow wool, Ranadur is safe tonight. If it comes out with a gray wool, Ranadur is not safe. Ranadur, the fate of the game, you are safe tonight. Holy oh my shit. god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Ranadur, walk me through the moment to moment of what possessed you to use the shot in the dark. Honestly, I just found out from, I think, Edgar told me yo dude you're getting votes and i knew that I, I didn't have much of an option i didn't think i had that many numbers obviously i had tim but i wasn't sure about anybody else who i was able to vote with me so that's the main thing that influenced me to say hey i'm gonna risk this because if i don't then i'm gonna walk away from this you know fully regretting uh if i don't a lot of people during the season were like hey do this do that but at the end of the day it was truly my decision whether or not i decided to play it and that worked out for me Gotcha. Now, Happy, you you know you were on the the short end of the stick of this shot in the dark play. Uh, how did that make you feel when you got voted out due to uh, um, very unlucky circumstances? Um, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't see it coming at all because I had no idea my name was out during that round. So when Rand Ran Eater came up and played uh, his shot in the dark, I was like, okay, whatever. Someone else is going home. And then when it was successful, I was like, uh oh. Someone else is going home. And then when I said, when I heard my name coming up, I was just like, uh oh, I'm going home. <laughs> and then um, my initial reaction to actually like getting out at that tribal council was just like, this is kind of cool. Like, I don't, I don't think I've seen this. I think this happened before Spoiler Alert 45 aired. Yeah. And I thought this is this was like the first time I've ever seen that kind of thing happen. So I was kind of hyped for it, even though I got out. One of the masterminds of this move, BMO, got to turn it to you. You know, you were very, you were a favorite this season coming into the game. Uh, you made it, you made a big move, a big play on keeping, uh, I think it was, Mike was originally supposed to be going home and you turned it to happy. You were in a conversation with Tim and Miles and what, why happy? Why, like, why, why did he need to leave the game? So... Um, I was obviously on Shargao for the um, time being. And when I got over to um, Cebu, I noticed some different connections. Um, and even at the challenges, I noticed like connections with Happy and Mike. And once we got to merge, they were like the duo. Uh, it was, I knew it all along. I wanted both of them out, great players, but I just knew they wouldn't stick with me. So once Mike's name was out there, it was out there and everything, but I didn't feel like it had much traction. And after Miles and I were talking to Happy about who to vote out, and it was between like Mike and JP, I think. Um, and after he said like, no, let's do something else that I did not like that at all. So once I talked to Miles and Tim and how we weren't feeling super great about like, is this Mike vote going to work? Is this Ranitor thing going to work? I brought up the name Happy and, um, I'm glad I didn't I mean sorry, but I mean, he was a great player. And honestly, if he made it past that um, tribal council, I could have seen him making it to the end. hundred percent. All right. Now I want to change the topic to dynamic duos, right? Cause we had a lot of them this season. We had Mike and JP. We had Mike and happy as well. We had Edgar and Ray. We had Renator and Tim, but personally, my favorite dynamic duo was Leah and her parrot. So. I agree. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> so, yeah, kind of like walk me through your journey just because like I'm curious. Obviously, this whole opportunity for you to even get on the show was unlike a lot of others. Like walk us through your journey to get to where we are right now. Uh, OK, well, I had no clue this Minecraft thing was going on when 
you like asked me to be a part of it. So I was streaming Roblox Survivor and I was referencing all my knowledge based on the Roblox game. And I knew like you shouldn't make enemies. And I always stuck to my friends in those games. So I was like, all right, so I just need to make a friend, I guess. And I guess that's what I did. I think I'm not sure when I got the parrot, but like on the first night of the island or something, I was like, all right, you know what? This is a beautiful map. I'm just going to explore it. And right. I came across like I, I figured out that I, I was able to destroy the, the thing. I was able to like chop wood and stuff. So I like started getting seeds and I saw a parrot and that's when I got the parrot. <laughs> Ray, I'm going to turn it to you. So, look, you went from getting, spoiler alert, uh, fourth boot on Big Brother Minecraft 8 to now you're in the, the top four of Minecraft Survivor Eternal Oasis. Why do you think you did so much better in this season than your original season that you played on? Great question. Um, I really don't know because playing these games, I really do feel the stress. And uh, I kind of like what Tim said earlier, I... I was stressed out the whole time. There's never a point where I feel like really confident and good about my my chances because th this entire experience, you're putting yourself out there. It's very like anxiety inducing. And I guess on Big Brother, I, I was a lot more afraid because I, I didn't know how people would perceive me. But this time around, I just kind of like wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. Like if people didn't like me for like the moves I made or like the subtle, the subtle game that I uh, tried implementing, that's fine. I really just wanted to figure out what would be the best path for me to win. Cause I really wanted to win. I wanted to, you know, <laughs> like I, I remember someone saying like the premier redemption. I wanted my own personal redemption. I wanted to actually show that I, I, I have a personality. I'm not a brick. I don't know if that panned out as well, but I really, I'm really proud of the game I played. Uh, the idol, the friendships, Edgar, like ev everything. I was just really happy how everything went out. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe you can take from this experience and you can learn how to maybe successfully craft a, a pickaxe. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Come on. Crazy. When we return, we're going to talk to Mike and JP, the duo that went to every single tribal council they could this season. We'll be back with the reunion of Minecraft Survivor Eternal Oasis. Welcome back to the Minecraft Survivor Eternal Oasis Reunion Special. Mike, I want to turn it to you, man. You ran the pre-merge like clockwork. Every Everybody was, you know, eating out of your hands, man. Walk me through how you decided to play the game and how it just fell the way it did. Uh, I was I just turned 17 when I applied. I put 16 now, but I just turned 17, so I was, like, young and stupid. So when I was coming in day of, I was, like, off of, like, four hours of sleep, I think. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to be a pussy. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I think post-swap, it just gave me that chance with the extra vote and everything just gave me the chance to do what I wanted to do. You know, I had that immunity. And, you know, I'm a very blunt person. Uh, I could do whatever the fuck I want. I could say whatever the fuck I want, really. Uh, sorry, but... And give me, I want to say my boy JP. And I guess that mentality just gave me the the balls to do whatever i want and not have regrets you know my placement it's kind of ass but you know i came here and the game i played i say i'm proud of it you know so yeah that's just my mindset on everything jp i'll ask you the same question because right. <laughs> you had a great you had a you it seemed like you had a really great run it seemed like mike took credit for a lot of the moves that were made but it seemed like you know you and mike worked together and a lot of the moves you made were together but you know obviously mike took the credit because he had the extra vote blah 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 whatever so tell me like your story about playing this game okay so essentially um i used to play a bunch of like minecraft survivors big brothers or whatnot um especially during covid um and my perception people perceived me as this guy that was just a floater um someone that they didn't think could play for themselves so i i think my whole motivation to play this game was to change that perception of me and i think i know others may disagree but i think i did one hell of a job um there was plenty of different votes 
where people saw me as a number and used tried to use me. But then I just I knew where I stood with them and I used that against them. Um, different examples being being the middle of the Bradley vote. Um, I was also fed that information between both Andrea and Edgar um, to, to essentially know like that I wasn't the target of that vote at the end of the day. I thought I was going home because of the challenge, but I wasn't. Um, I convinced Wiley that I was with them even after Mike played his steal a vote, meaning the vote, obviously, if I vote with Mike there, that means uh, Wiley goes home. He didn't play a shot in the dark. Um, same with, uh, I think, Tim and Rand thought I was with him for that vote. There's just, I feel like I, everyone after the season sees me as a snake, as a player that they couldn't trust me because I was a slimy guy. But during the game, I think a lot of people trusted me more than they should have. And I used my perception of being this, like, um, very... I think heartwarming guy against people, and I think it worked out for me well. Now, JP, now I, I do want to bring up this conversation because this is a very important conversation that we need to have because yeah. a lot of people, including myself, are very <laughs> unsure and unclear as to why your vote went to Ranader in the end okay. when it seemed like you and Edgar had a very closer relationship in the game. And I mean, he never voted you out, and Ranader seemed to have been totally against you for the majority of the game. So what possessed you to... Vote for somebody like Ranader when Edgar was like undi undoubtedly loyal to you, like for majority of the game. Okay, so I have a good a good answer for this. Um, basically, every jury jury member has their own perception of the game and who deserves to win. As jury members, we have different criteria and marks for us to hit. For, I mean, for them to hit on our votes. For me, I don't vote based on loyalty. I vote based on who I believe played the best overall strategic, social, and physical game. Um, first off. A big thing that really hit me for not voting Edgar there was when he openly admitted to BMO that he would never have voted against him, against her, even though she was the clear threat to win. That was the nail in the coffin for me because I know had Edgar sat next to BMO in the final uh, final three, uh, the vote would have been swept. Um, I just think that he relied heavily on a social game that he didn't make a lot of he didn't make enough moves for himself that really separated Rand's game for me because Rand. Even though Rand worked with BMO to get me out on point, um, Rand separated himself from Tim to vote me out, as well as also voting BMO out, being the big contributor of pushing BMO's name. And the last thing I want to say about my reason is essentially Rand's shot in the dark play, whether it was a good move or not for him, it literally changed the game. It, it's the reason why me, Mike, and Happy went out back to back to back, because had that not happened, Cebu might have had the majority. Um, and for me, uh, I just think I want to vote someone to win who I think had, had the, uh, the most impact on the season. And I think Rand had the most impact. So, yeah. All right, yeah, that's a very, very fair answer. Um, I, I do want to, I want to turn to Edgar cause I, I, I gotta hear your response to this. So Edgar, how do you feel about hearing JP's reasoning? Um, um, I think it's dumb. I'll be honest. I don't think he's dumb. I think it's really dumb uh, because if we're talking about overall gameplay, I came here knowing my weaknesses and I still managed to make it to the end with a lot more adversity than Ranader did. So uh, when it comes to that, like I understand his criteria, you know, I'm over it. It's all good. But like at the end of the day, like this is the way I see it, right? If we're in a game, like I'm going to want my buddies to succeed no matter what. Uh, and again, this is why Survivor is Survivor. They have different criteria for it. Um, but I would want my buddy to succeed regardless. So if JP had managed to be in the final, the only time I wouldn't have voted for JP is if Happy or Ray were there. Um, I had JP really high up on my list. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. Uh, I He can't really... I mean, he's like a judge of my game, right? But I made it further than him. So it's like, okay, like... Sure, my game, if you think my game was shit, I wouldn't be at Final Tribal Council. But I respect JP, uh, and, you know, I am not mad at his decision anymore. I was initially, but I'm not mad anymore. Uh, and, yeah, it is what it is. That's the beauty of Survivor, like I said before. Like, everyone has their own opinion, and we can agree to disagree and move on from there. And I also want to say I love you, Edgar. I'm sorry I voted. I didn't vote you to win, but at the end of the day... You shouldn't be sorry if... Okay, so you're... You have your criteria. Don't be sorry for voting. You saying sorry means you regret your vote. So I mean, obviously, I don't... with with your reasoning, when you say sorry, that's a form of regret. Don't say sorry. You voted okay. your vote. It yeah. is what it is. I'm happy. I mean, I... 
that Ranitor won or Tim won or anyone, like I said, anyone that was in the merge, I was happy that they won because we all did our own. We all had our own path to the final. And it was really just like it was a fucking shit show at the end because I genuinely <laughs> loved everyone and it would have been a hard vote for me. So I totally mm-hmm. understand. So it just good. it hurt. it just sucks being like, you know, like the deciding vote for you. And like, I, I mean, like, obviously, I, I wish it wasn't the deciding vote, but kind of just happened. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, I love you, man. You're one of the nicest Likewise, dudes I've ever bro. met it's in my life. Good. So like, yeah, it's all love. Yeah. Dog. It's all I mean, love. Tim should have won. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I'm glad that I'm glad that we could have this discussion here. Very formal setting. Yes, you know, we got everyone's got suits on, so you know it just makes it feel. All right, anyway, uh, except me, I still have my baseball uniform. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't have the leather, the leather, pants, the leather pants, on. pants. Yeah, where's the pants? Yeah, so real quick, just real quick before we go to a commercial and and reveal the uh, the fan questions. Edgar, explain the leather pants. Uh, people are asking me what. Why did you have leather pants on the entire season? So uh, when we were in Ponderosa pre like pregame, uh, I accidentally stole the pants from the Ponderosa host, um, and I didn't know I had them on. <laughs> Uh, so I just decided to keep them the whole game. They were good luck. I mean, I made it to final tribal council. So those are my lucky leather pants. All right. All right. When we return, we are going to answer fan questions. The, fa- the questions that fans are dying to get answered. We'll be back with the reunion of Minecraft Survivor Eternal Oasis. Hello, everybody. My name is Edgar Cordero. I'm 25 years old. Um, I'm originally from Miami, Florida, but I currently live in Ramstein, Germany. Uh, I'm applying for the show because honestly, I stumbled into Andrew's channel uh, today. Uh, fun fact about me, um, I'm actually college friends with Joseph Abden. He was on season 24. He rushed my fraternity and uh, I spoke to him plenty of times. I told myself this year that I would do things I've never done before or reach out and do things that make me feel uncomfortable so I can learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Um, it was nice to meet you guys. And yeah, that's it. Welcome back to the reunion of Minecraft Survivor Eternal Oasis. Right now, we're going to be answering some of the questions that the fans have left in my Discord server. So if you're not a member of my Discord server and you want to be involved with future events like this, a link will be in the description below for you to join. All right. The first question is from somebody named Coach. Coach is asking, Fimo, do you regret turning on Miles? No. Should I have kept him safe for another tribal and got him out later? Yes. It would have been safer for me to have Miles one more time so I could have another number with me because I knew Leah and Miles were not going to turn on me. But I also knew that if I got to the end with Miles, I don't think I would have won or it would have been close either way. So me getting him out there at that specific moment wasn't my greatest decision, but he was a big threat physically and it helped me to win future immunities. Uh, next question goes to JP. This is from Easton. He asks, yeah. JP, what yeah. would your plan been if the tri- that tribal wasn't a double? A big point of my strategy going in through the whole game was essentially kind of what Charlie says in, in 46, keep your doors open um, and just keep your options open essentially. So for me, that was including keeping Tim as close to me as possible, even though I was working with the other side of the game. Um, I wanted to, uh, what was it, mend the fences, uh, mend uh, relationships with Randitor, trying to convince him that I didn't vote him when I really did. And even after the season, I talked to, even after the season, I talked to Rand and he said that he thought I voted with him, which I think I did a really good job of convincing people that I was this trustworthy guy when I wasn't. First off, I think if it was a normal round, say it was the next immunity challenge, Bemo would beat Miles the next immunity challenge. And I think the only reason uh, that Bemo survived there over me is Bemo is way more well connected and that people liked Bemo. I think if it was Miles in the in the chair, though, I think Miles would have gone there because I don't think Miles had as close of relationships with other people. All right. Thanks, JP. All right. Next question is from Hero, and this goes to Leah. Uh, Leah, if you did not get voted out at the final five, how would you have proceeded with the game and what would your have strategy been? Oh my gosh, wait, I need to, um, honestly, I was like, I was still learning. I was still in the process of like, how does this work when it gets to like the final three? Cause I know that you need to make like a statement and whatever. I was like, okay, so what are other people going to do? And I think my mind would have just been set to get there first, which is a pretty bad strategy, but it was get there first and then think about it. Not my greatest moment. <laughs> That's fair. That's very fair. Well, thanks, Leah. All right. Now, I'm going to turn this next question to the the pre-merge boots. 
Woo. So, you know, it's Andrea, Bradley, question. Tucker, Fox, and Wiley. Now, the five of you, if the vote was up to you, Thomas asks, who would you have vote to win, Tim, Edgar, or Rand, if you had the choice? Andre, we'll um, start with you. Um, oh gosh. I mean, I feel like I've seen a lot more of Edgar's game to know like what he's kind of done um, like throughout the game and everything. He didn't win competitions, but like he like he found a way to survive tribal councils. He really wasn't that like well connected at the start. He almost got voted out the first tribal count the first tribal council <laughs> and the second one and then he made it all the way to the end. So I mean that's a really respectable thing for me. So I think it would probably be you. probably be Edgar, of course. Alright, we got one vote for Edgar. Andrea votes for Edgar. Bradley, what are you, who are you <laughs> voting? I'm voting for Edgar and it's not even close either. Like it's gotta be Edgar. <laughs> wow. Alright. Tucker. Oh, oh Bradley, I love you. Love you too. Uh, I think I've made it clear that I would have voted for Tim. Uh, Tim barely got any votes against him. And just like, I mean, as I, as I saw the game, uh, clearly he had the winners at it and I thought he was going to win. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's it. All right. So we got two for Edgar, one for Tim. Fox, Appreciate you. who would you vote? I also agree with Tucker with his edit in the season. Tim would have been like the clear winner but to be honest i would have voted for edgar because the man who couldn't really do much of anything in minecraft not to throw that much hate but the man who survived no basically either. everything who couldn't play minecraft and getting to the final three eventually to the final two that is also respectful so my vote would have been edgar wow i got three for edgar one for tim wiley who are you voting so if I was going to look at this because I was in the game, I made it past merge, then I would have to go with Tim. Tim was my duo, my buddy, and I'm very loyal. So like I probably couldn't have seen beyond that, honestly. So I would have voted for Tim. Wow. So I want to turn it to Randitor. I, I got to ask you, you must feel very good about yourself, making it, getting the right people out at the right times because these people would have not voted for you in the end. You must feel like, how does that make you feel? I'd say with the first three, there's not much I can do about that. But with Tucker, uh, Josh, and Wiley, I, I, I wouldn't say that I got the right people out. I'm just saying that, like, they didn't, they weren't there the, whatever, nine, seven, eight, nine rounds that I was actually playing the game to actually see my game. They just watched mm -hmm. the the 10 episodes that you posted on YouTube instead of actually being there themselves in order to watch the game transpire. I mean, yeah, like like I said, um, I didn't really get to see much of Ranitor or, like, Tim's game, like, but um, I think maybe if I had seen more, maybe my vote would have changed. But like, I do have a lot of respect for what Edgar's done the entire game because I got to see a lot more of it. I want to go on back to that. Out of all the three finalists, um, the only one I've actually spoken to like during the gameplay was Edgar. But I've connected with him a lot um, over Discord DMs since the season ended. And I can confidently say that I would love to give this man $250. Wow. Love to hear That's it. That's exactly what I just said. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd also like to interject That's a happy here. scream. I really vibed with Tim my, the three hours I was there. So, <laughs> right. right. I'll, I like you too. Whoever you guys would have voted for, I think it would have made a great winner. I think we all had our own way to the final, and it was phenomenal either way you look at it. Like, if you look at my social game, you look at Tim's strategic prowess, and then Renner are really clutching up at the last couple of challenges. You know, it all, we all had our own path to the final, and I was going to be happy regardless of who would have won. Amazing. All right. I love to hear it. Let's go on to the next question. This next question comes from Nifty, which I want to give a big shout out to Nifty. He he does our edic for this season. So he's the one that analyzes the edits uh, that I give out to people. Not, not intentionally. I don't really intentionally give out people certain edits. I just like to craft the story. But shout out to Nifty for analyzing and breaking down the edits for this season uh, and even prior he did big brother minecraft 8 as well and i'm assuming he's going to do the future ones in the future so his question goes to wiley and wiley's question is what would you have done if you made it to the merge so if you're looking at it within the game so that means mike would have went home and there's two paths that i could see so first of all what well, i would trust a jp if that would have happened so i would have sticked with him mike and ranitor and kind of went with that but i would have no chance there either way because everyone hated me at that point and they all wanted me home you could see the clips of uh bmo and everyone saying oh we hate this wily guy let's vote him out 
So like I had no chance there. And the other route was I would try to stick with uh, Tim and Randers still, but also try to get the vote on JP. That was the only option I would have seen if I made it to merge. Uh, I guess that's the follow-up question could be from Cam CQ. Uh, why was Wiley a drill sergeant in this tribe? Well, which we kind of answered earlier, but you know, why, why Wiley? Why? It's, it comes down to nerves. Like when you guys play this game or if you ever get the chance, you come in with this expectation of how you would play the game. And then when you're in there, it changes because these are new people to me. I don't know any of these people. And coming into these like super fans of the game that I've been a casual watcher, but a big fan, but like a casual watcher, you guys speak like speak about every player. And I'm like, how do you do that? So like coming in to being a person that enjoys it, feel like it would be a fun experience to come in and then like, okay, how am I going to play this game? And then um, I just felt like when I was in that thing of just kind of telling people what to do at the very beginning, just kind of came natural because people say I'm a natural leader type of person. So I guess that kicked in. And then as soon as that moment, uh, like I said earlier with uh, Mike and uh, Tim saying, Hey, let's get out Tucker. That's when it like, like went into hyperdrive and I kind of screwed up. So I kind of went in <laughs> uh, wanting to play a small type of game, but changed completely entirely because of nerves. And uh, that's the, probably the reason I became a drill sergeant was not intentional. Gotcha. All right. Thanks, Wiley. All right. Next question is going to Leah. Questions from Evan. Evan is asking you, Leah, do you regret giving BMO your second idol? In all honesty, I don't think I really like thought about it that much. Like it wasn't like if you gave me the opportunity to give BMO the idol again, I probably would have done it. I, I don't regret it at all. All right. This next question comes from Diamond G. Does anybody have any moments that happened off camera that actually didn't end up making it into an episode? I have one. <laughs> Happy? Let's hear it. Oh, um, so there's this, I think this is just exactly when the swap happened. And um, Mike was like on the bench. So me and Edgar came up with the plan to throw the challenge. <laughs> and we, we, we were basically, we basically were, because if you see in the edit, I mean, it makes, look, makes it look like Edgar was really, really bad in the challenge, but me and him were throwing it. Uh, I held the letter E in my inventory the entire time, but I didn't tell production. So uh, production Dude. had no idea I was doing it. <laughs> yes. Oh my so God. Um, uh, Andrew or whoever was spectating our tribe was like, uh-oh, we might have forgotten the letter. So they gave us the letter and then we won. And then <laughs> the funny thing was afterwards, because um, Ray was the person or the, the man who... Um, Gave me the I answer. A, dude, that was my moment, Happy. Yeah, that, was, that was your moment. <laughs> but the thing that wasn't included is I think I had like a two-minute confessional of just going off on Ray. I was just like cussing him out for no reason in my confessional just to see if it would get in the edit. But it unfortunately didn't. But me and Edgar throwing that challenge was probably one of my favorite moments that didn't make it in the edit. I, I mean, it, it doesn't look now. like I was throwing it right because... No, oh, no, uh, no. Yeah, no, you were definitely throwing it. You were definitely throwing it, buddy. Yeah, I was pissed. I was trying to get like <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, my favorite the, moments too. It was also per post merge. We all climbed a tree and took a <laughs> on the top of oh, the tree. Like we found the topest tree, oh in my like God, the, the highest tree in camp, true. and we all got together and we have a selfie. Uh, we took a selfie, and I still have that photo as my screensaver to this day. Oh wow! Aww. Wait, Edgar, yeah, oh. we got to send me the photo so I can throw it up on screen right now so we can all see it. Bet, 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 I got bet, it. Bet. I'll send it to you now. All right, great. Oh, that's a oh, great photo. Yeah, I really, I really oh, wow. enjoy talking about this. Fantastic Disney. photo. The first round. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, the the Disney talk, uh, Edgar. Like what? What the fuck, man? Like uh, <laughs> I I gotta ask. Uh, so. People may have been asking me, like, yo, what? the first vote may have not been so clear-cut. Like, why Why was Andrea voted out? Well, <laughs> I'll come here and answer this. This is an answer, a question I'll uh, answer. You, like, nobody, nobody, absolutely nobody split apart and went into different rooms except for Edgar and Andrea. They were the only two that yeah. were alone. And while they were alone, the rest of the tribe was on their own and saying, well, it's got to be one of the two. And... Everything, every conversation you saw from that round made it into the episode because there were not that many. Mm -hmm. Like every single conversation that's split apart, it made it into the episode from round one. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
it was it was so bad because I at first I didn't even realize it was just the two of us. And then when I realized I was like, I have to get out of here as soon as possible. <laughs> um, but I mean, like from the start as well, like I feel like it wasn't like totally clear, but like with the votes, I think it might have been a little bit. But like, I mean, it was like me, Bradley and Apollo, like we had gotten to be like good friends like throughout that first round. Um, so, you know, we were voting together and I knew that like, I was more of a social player. So I was kind of like thinking to myself, well, like I kind of screwed up the first challenge. I didn't even get to do anything. The second one, like, I, like, honestly, I could be in trouble. So yeah, like I was strategizing. It just wasn't like, I I'd strategized a lot in the whisper, <laughs> honestly. Um, but I mean, it's it's all it's all good. I think um, Edgar definitely deserved to stay. Um, I mean, he got to final three like that. That's that's incredible. But I think if I had stayed a little longer, I definitely could have done something. I think things would have been a little different. Hopefully, <laughs> well, Andrea, if given the opportunity to come back and play again, would you would you take that opportunity? Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> I think Bring that would be so fun. All right, who knows? That Maybe we'll see so you on a, new, on a on a season coming up in the future. All Let's right. go. Oh. <sighs> I have a personal question. This is something for me as a, as a viewer of the show as well because I love this season. The season was great. Uh, Ray. You know, let's say a what if situation. You win fire making and you're in the final three with Edgar and Ranader. Uh, out of the jurors that are here, I want to I want to see. By a show of hands, you can punch in the air in Minecraft. Who would have voted for Ranader to win? Three for Ran. Okay. Who gets Edgar's vote? Two for Edgar. Okay. And who gets Ray's vote? Wow, just Bemo. All right. So it's a three to two to one. Miles is missing. Miles, missing. Miles. Miles is missing. Well, we'll yeah. never know what Miles would have voted for, will we? I think that's an interesting parallel because... Had I gone uh, instead of Tim, I would have been in Tim's position where I would have been a one vote finalist against the three to three. So I it probably would have led to Edgar winning, which is, I think, a funny, I guess, like, you know, a, other alternative reality. Yeah, that is that is that's a really good point. <laughs> right. That's crazy. That's tough. When we come back, we will reveal the results of the fan favorite vote that you have been voting and casting your votes all week. We'll be back with the reunion of Minecraft Survivor Eternal Oasis. Welcome back to the reunion of Minecraft Survivor Eternal Oasis. Well, I can safely say this season was one of my favorite seasons to host. This cast, I respect this cast so much for being very easy to work with, being very kind and just amazing outside of the game. I think you all deserve, everyone should just give a round of applause to this cast. Like, thank you so much for yeah, there you go. Thank you so much for doing yeah. that. And someone shot the dark. Let's go. Let's go. Yay. Yay. <laughs> all right. But without further ado, this is what we're all here for, right? We're here to find out who wins fan favorite vote. All right. All right. The top three vote getters in no particular order were Ray. Damn. Bemo. <laughs> Ooh. And Mike. Ooh. Uh, I can say, Ray, you did not get it. Sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, pop three, damn. top three. Pop, pop, pop. Tough break, but, man. Uh, Bimo and Mike, the vote difference between you two, one of you is first, one of you is third. The vote difference is about 50 votes. Oh. <laughs> this is fucked up, man. That's about like <laughs> kind of my kids. That's like the kind of my kids. <laughs> <laughs> and your kids vote the winner of fan favorite of minecraft survivor eternal oasis is bemo what's going hey, on oh my god oh. Hey, bemo. Yeah. wait if, if mike's 47 kids he could have won man like why didn't they vote you mike right i'll put them all up for adoption man that's uh, hey, who's oh. who fourth and fifth fourth and fifth happy you were fourth yes sir Edgar, you were fifth. I was robbed. Yeah. I should have won. Hey, nice. <laughs> Tim, you were seventh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was, that's, that's a Damn, robbery. Shoddy. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we say goodbye to this amazing season, does anybody have any final words? 
You know what? I'd like to stand up and say some final words for my 47 kids. Why is there a dice here? You know, I hope to come back someday and play for the $250 again for my 47 kids that are up for adoption and uh, <laughs> maybe adopt them again. Be their, uh, the fa- not the stepfather, but the father that stepped up. And yeah, I'll be sitting back down. Go watch Big Brother 9. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was only here for two hours, but it was great. Oh, thank Yay. you, Andrea. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Catch Everybody me on Survivor I wanna, IRL. I, I want to say something real quick. Renditor, yes. Uh, I, I want to say, it, I didn't expect to get like a bunch of DMs like congratulating me. So I, is, I didn't expect for everyone to be so nice. So thank you uh, to everybody. I'm glad that I, uh, obviously, Andrew, you select the 16 of us. But thank you to everybody as well, the audience, for being so nice and, uh, I guess, kind. That, I, I, I'm loving to hear that, man. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. All I right. have something to say. Bemo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to thank thank the fans for for for, for voting for me. Um, I just came into this game to just try to redeem myself after my amazing failure of an experience of um, Big Brother Eight. Um, I just wanted to redeem myself, but I wasn't expecting the fans to also like the game that I played. So I just want to thank you guys um, and also thank everyone on this cast. This was an amazing season, great turnout, great winner, amazing final three. You know, it was great. I'm so glad we all got to play with each other. And yeah, this was awesome. Yeah, Bimo. Thanks, Bimo. All right, with that, it's been a great season. You know, when when, when a, one great season comes to an end, we have a great season on the horizon of Big Brother Minecraft. We will see you sometime when we air Big Brother Minecraft Nine. Uh, announcements will be coming soon, so stay tuned for that. And that's it. Thank you all for watching. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Right. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to get my call for uh, season four. I'll be back soon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm waiting for my call. I'm waiting for my call. Ready for mine.